I hope you're enjoying my dad's videos. Make sure to share this video with your family and friends, like and subscribe and turn on post notifications so you get notified for all my dad's new videos. My social media will be tagged down below so you can follow it. And just remember, Jesus loves you. All right, so this is Gene, my decoder. He is amazing military intel. He has gone out in the field to certain hives, if you know what hives are, where there's um, cabal members and satanic people. And his wife actually has gone with him. So she's pretty fantastic too. She's, she's Filipino and we get along, so it's great. He is also now being tweeted out by um, Dan Bongino as a genius. So I have to add that. And um, yes, we were both attacked by one of your former guests. That's I think it was actually um, <laughs> underneath, the, I found out it was not Dan Bongino. It was right under him. It was John Gull. Okay. Okay. Same difference. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. So, well, welcome, Gene, anyway. Thank you, Charles. And it would be very interesting for you to share some of your intel with us that, so that we can enlighten the people that are watching us because all this information that we're getting, people are fascinated on how we're getting it and how it's being decoded. One of the first things that became a shock to me when I came on this journey, when I started to look at the information, I couldn't make head nor tail of it. And I needed help from every single angle to try and just work out what was being said. Because I hadn't even considered sort of numerology, symbology, astrology, any of those ologies. Um, but it was, it's been a fascinating journey. And of course, when you come on that journey, you learn an awful lot. And um, now we've come together. It'd be fascinating to, for you to give us a bit of an insight into your world. Now, it's... Uh... People call it Gene's fantasy world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some of the people that attack me, uh, on, uh, especially on Rick's show on Blessed to Teach, call it Gene's fantasy world, and, uh, you know, that I'm making all it, it all up. And it was the same, you know, on the dumbs and all that. Uh, but it was the same thing that I had happen 30 years ago when I was talking about the Rothschilds and the New World Order. It was still Gene's fantasy world, and I'm making it all up. And now when they attack me, they go, well, everybody knows about that, and we've known about that for forever. <laughs> no, 30 yes. years ago, you were attacking me on that. <laughs> sure. No, that's – it's it's amazing how suddenly um, – I had a situation the other day where I said to somebody – about moving money. I said, you need to get a move on, otherwise you're not going to be able to do it. And this was to do with when they changed the currency in India. Mm. I said, if you don't do it, you're going to lose all your money. He's going, Charlie, I'm the money expert. And that's when I turned around and said, well, you know that X is an unknown quantity and spurt is a drip under pressure. So I said, you maybe are an expert, but I said, I'm telling you that you need to do something, otherwise all of your money will disappear. No, it won't, no, it won't. So, I said, if you, want to, if you want us to change it now, the rates are 10%. No, too much. Anyway, when it started to happen, the next day I said, look, it's gone to 20% now, mate. You need to get a move on, otherwise you're going to lose all your money. No, Charlie, if you can do it for 10%, I'll do it. I said, no, it's today at 20%, tomorrow it'll be 30%. I said, no, it won't. It'll come back to 10%. So anyway, next day it went to 30%. So I'll tell you what, I'll do it for 20%. I said, no, it's now 30%. <laughs> So then it went, the next day it went to 50%, and then two days later it went to nothing. Nobody would change it. And he's gone, what will you give me today? I've gone, the best, best thing I can give you is advice. To, that you probably get some of the best um, firelighters that you, you could ever have. I said, you might have enough money left over to buy matches, you might not, but it's absolutely worthless today. And, he's, and then he was crying like a baby, saying, oh, I've lost my wife, I've lost my business, I've lost my car. Why didn't you tell me? So I've been telling you for months, mate. I've been telling you for months and months, and you were the expert. And what, what, what we're seeing now, Gene, is a load of people out there that were so, say, experts who uh, sadly don't know an awful lot. Yeah, I've um, had some of the people that I've been on the shows, like Kirsten, and um, uh, defend me when <laughs> some of these crazy people that attack me, and it's just like yeah. who are self-proclaimed <laughs> experts on everything. And yet they don't know a lot about much at all. Yeah, that's true. 
But your story reminds me of the Oracle of Delphi when uh, came with the, the prophecies and then to the emperor of Rome and, you know, it was 500 pieces of coin for three books and then he wouldn't pay it because it was too much. So he burned one of the books and came back. <laughs> Next day it was two books for five. <laughs> now I'm going to pay that's too much. <laughs> Next day it came back, okay, now you got one book for 500. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You oh, confirmation yourself. for your, um, you were right about the blockchain. X22 Dave, my, we have the same manager, confirmed that on his video, that Donald Trump's been working on that for a year and seven months. So you are correct. <laughs> and um, also, I have done some research and looked at our little interview. It's the highest of the whole week and um, still going up. So it's a good team. And the Twitter comments are CW, Charlie Ward and CW, Kirsten W, are a good team. So I appreciate it. No problem at all. It's, uh, the most important thing is to get the message out there right. um, of what's going on. And I was, I, I was excited this morning. I don't normally get really excited. But I was right. excited because when I got my intel today, I right. was actually mentioned in the intel that was coming out. It's the first time it's ever happened. Oh, wow. Um, basically saying that I was accurate with the information on the dates as to when the SWIFT system would be ending, and when mm. the quantum financial system would be starting. So it's quite nice to get a mention from the, the, from the top to say that my information was accurate. You want the rest of the uh, story as, the, as it used to now for the rest of the story? <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why did they call it quantum? Go on. Uh, it's not just blockchain, but when you're hooked to a quantum system and you create something, every time it's created, it has a unique quantum signature for that space, place, and time. Correct. And so the reason it's utterly, if it was just pure blockchain, it is hackable. But right. when it's tied to quantum, that quantum, it literally is like a miniature quantum singularity it's tied to so that when that particle or whatever you create, whether it's a coin or a paper note that's tied to a quantum event, it has a unique signature in space, place, and time, and that can never be duplicated. That is absolutely unique. So it has that quantum signature. So when that's connected to the quantum system, you can't hack it because you can't reproduce that, that moment, place, and time. And so every coin, every note, everything that's a financial uh, implement or article will have a unique signature under the quantum system. Well, that, that confirms the, probably the best piece of news we had yesterday or the day before, that the U.S. voting system is also going to be on the quantum financial system. So that uh, so the, 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 the bit, uh, not the Bitcoin, the, the blockchain being used for the quantum financial system is integrated with the voting system so that people can't fiddle the vote. So all the millions they've spent on these postal votes, the Democrats, are now absolutely worthless. Yeah, and that goes the same way that when you register to vote, you go to a register place, you show your ID or, you know, whatever you show, to, they register you. It qu creates you as a quantum okay. so that that quantum is tied to you forever. For So then when you go to, if you were to go to another voting booth and you try to vote again and you show, it's going to tie you quantumly and it's going to know you. And so you can't double your vote or triple your vote or change your ID and vote as another person because it's actually going to be registered directly to you. It'll, the quantum system will know you as, an, as a unique individual, a unique article, just like a monetary instrument. It'll know you as an, a unique instrument. It's literally tied to the quantum signature coming, you know, each time a particle comes into being. They used to think particles don't come in and out, but they actually come in and out every Planck, in, uh, Planck quantity and time so that when that Planck uh, article comes into being, whether that's tied to a person or tied to a monetary or tied to a vote of a person, that is unique. And so the person can't vote multiple times. Even if they went and registered to vote, tried with a different ID, or tried to mail in, it would know them because it's tied to them. The quantum systems know that, absolute, of every single item in the, all of creation is utterly unique. Brilliant. Absolutely amazing. And your knowledge on this subject is so constructive. Because what it does is it builds up the pieces of the puzzle so people can see the picture. 
Yeah, and what people, you know, they say, well, it's hackable. Uh, not really, because that's tied to the word of God. You can't hack God. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> well, I happen to know that they've been trying to hack the, the, the basics of the principle of this system for nine years with a hundred hackers ind independently, um, and not one of them has managed. Yep. And because I don't really understand what quantum signature is and how it works. And they, if they realized what it really was, they would realize they're wasting their time trying to hack it. It can't be done. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but, they, you know, he, he needs to make 10 times sure, especially with the corruption that's gone before him. Yeah. So on this vote, you know, it's going to be incredible because all they did last time is made every vote that was uh, about half the votes fair so that when they tried to manipulate and give votes to Hillary, it actually wound up th throwing the vote onto Trump. And so they actually sabotaged themselves. And she might have actually been possibly able to win had they not tried to manipulate the system. But this time there's so many people voting for Trump that with it being utterly unhackable, we're gonna see the largest victory in the history of the world ever. Yeah, that's what I've been told. Yeah. Anyway, so Lee wanted um, Lee wanted um, Gene to talk about the clones, yeah. different kinds of clones. Also, um, linking it to um, Branson's Island, Virgin Atlantic, and also uh, we have to confirm about um, America's about the dumps, the deep military under, underground bases, about ninety two percent clear. South America only five percent, and what about Europe, Gene? How many percent? He's got he's got people all over the world that work under him now that take the pictures and everything. So he's got worldwide people that will be there. He's got people in Europe, South America, Asia, everywhere. So, Gene, what what's the percentage in of the dumps in Europe that have been cleaned out? Well, they don't actually work under me. I'm kind of like a small cog in a big, big wheel yeah, <laughs> that just knows here. about the rest of the wheel. You know, I get people emailing me. I'm the fourth from the left in this dumb picture, right? <laughs> this guy's going into a dump telling me what's, what they found in there and all this crazy stuff. Like when they went in the Vatican and it, the thing goes from all the way from the Vatican mm -hmm. to Jerusalem, and then the tunnel goes all the way to the uh, Giza Plateau, which is nothing but a huge honeycomb. There's a massive city under there. It's like what they're finding in Victoria and Melbourne, and Sydney is almost like one complete inner, they call it the spider web because it's so bad. And so, and they thought that the, the Hague, the Hague, however you pronounce it, was the worst were what they found, but now Australia is worse. Yeah, and they're expecting South Africa to be the worst on Earth because it's so ancient and there's so much there. But yeah. currently, the U.S., like you said, Kirsten, is 92. It's actually now 94, mm -hmm. and um, Canada is 12 percent, and Europe is 22 percent, and South America is 12 percent. Okay, wrong. Well. <laughs> Problem with South America is you have the. Uh, the Andes going through there, and especially like Peru, I didn't cover anything because there's too much to cover. There's so many dumps, c tunnels coming, submarine entrances, ancient stuff that's Inca and Mayan. There's ancient Mayan caves and all things that the Cabal took over using all of that to do all, you know, the energies are dark in there, so it's perfect for them to do all their satanic mumbo jumbo, you know, disgusting evil stuff they do with kids and all that. Yeah. Now, I've actually had the, I don't know if it's a privilege, but I've had the opportunity, if you like, to actually visit one of these underground facilities. And I was absolutely amazed at the length and depth and how it's an under, when you talk about an underground city, that, that's what we're talking about. I mean, 40, 50, 60 miles of roads underground with, with hundreds and hundreds of golf buggies transporting people around, shops. Um, accommodation, everything down there. It's they're amazing, and, and I was just completely in shock. I never knew they existed until I had to get to go down there for some business that I was doing. Um, and it was um, it was an incredible insight into a world that I did not know existed. Now we're finding out that they're all over the world. Yeah, the number that uh, 
that I was given <laughs> kind of boggles my mind. I'm like, that number can exist. But when you realize how they create them, where they have just little devices that are a meter in diameter and that it's about eight, nine, 12 meters long, depending on the various, that when they drop it, it bores with a particle beam and it's timed so that it's falling with this, with gravity. It's yeah. that's what's propelling it. And then it knows based on how fast it's falling to detonate a nuclear device and neutron bomb that once it blows, you've got a huge cavern. Then all they have to do while that's all occurring, they're having a boring machine boring towards that area. They p then p pump in uh, nitrogen, liquid nitrogen that become cools the whole thing really completely down and also takes up and gets rid of all the gases that would be hazardous so that when the boring machine gets in there, then they pipe in re regular fresh air from the other side and you within two months, they've built the infrastructure and everything so they can build these massive underground cities like under D uh, Denver or eight cities bigger than Denver going down as you go down. Of course, it gets bigger and bigger as you go down. And people, <laughs> people think it's just like, you know, who would want to live in a cave underground? But the, the technology is so vast. They have holograms. It looks like you're up above. You can see sky. You can see this, what looks like the sun, birds flying overhead, trees, deers and deer walking in parks. I mean, all kinds of stuff. It, it's it can look really beautiful and it looks very pristine and natural. And of course you don't see all the chemtrails and all that stuff in the sky. It looks really nice. It's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Okay. The and clones, the people are asking on this chat for all the clones, the different kinds of clones. So. Yeah. It's interesting on that. Um, I started learning about that when I started waking up to all this and I got, you know, kind of involved with a bunch of spooks, as we call it, in the Navy, uh, spies and some really great hackers that hacked into NASA. And I got to watch a lunar rover driving around underneath a biodome on the back of the moon and lie feed around a lake. And <laughs> it was really interesting. And I got a metal lady who had been in Bethesda and was talking about the different types of clones. And I met a robotoid, which is one of the type of clones. And, uh, if you're very, your senses are good, you don't want to meet one. They smell like a, a body. If you've ever smelled a body rotting in water in a ditch, that's how they smell because they're created by energy where like if we took Kirsten, you put her in a, in a, in a, in a room that has a particle beam that's bombarding her with low energy particles so that it's measuring her resonant frequency or quantum signature. It's recording all of her thoughts, feelings, and emotions. It's analyzing her DNA, recording all her memories. That's all, all uploaded to a CD-ROM. Then once all that information is uploaded, then they take you out of there and then they reverse the particle beam and it literally coalesces you so that that clone, it thinks it's you, it has all of your exactly like you, except that it, it doesn't have an internal power supply or, or soul or anything, but then it has to, it, it winds down because it doesn't have an internal power supply. That's why you see uh, with Nixon, when he threw up on the, in China on the, you know, who was there and he threw up on whose dog is because they hit him with particle beams, um, uh, ELF waves, excuse me. And it, because he was a robotoid, because he and his wife had died in a plane crash on the way to Canada two years earlier, he was starting to do what's called de-resing and winding down. So the beam wasn't at his resonant frequency because he wasn't a living being anymore. He was a robotoid. And they have to go to Camp David and get recharged at certain intervals because they wind down. And so he was slightly wound down. So it made him sick and it made his wife at the dinner freeze and slide under the table. You know, he slid under the table and she just froze. I mean, come on. I mean, I'm thinking, you know, people don't even notice this weird behaviors of stuff. You see that his wife sitting next to him and she just stares while he slides under the table. I mean, if somebody's sitting next to you and they slide under the table, either don't care about them, you like them, you hate them, whatever. You're going to have some kind of reaction. <laughs> you're just going to stare off into space like, like a, you're frozen. And so that, you know, the robotoids are one, but as they de-res, they start to stink really, really bad. And they create most of those back in the day at Bethesda. Now that's mostly done in dumps. 
the big one they used to do it of course they don't anymore because they totally destroyed that one was china lake um then also the second kind is where like with dolly the sheep they take uh, glial cells, which if you know where the Don Tien is in martial arts, essentially a little bit below your navel, you have undifferentiated cells, which are glial cells. They haven't been differentiated whether they're going to be what kind of tissue, like bone or hair or skin, etc. They then can th pull out the DNA off of the cell, and then they could do viral mapping and re-overlay and put new genetics on that and then grow tissue to a full person. And though they're not very good at it, um, they're working on that with the chromosome 19 and 20, but it, the clones are pretty pathetic, as we see with like uh, Kamala Harris's new clone. <laughs> That's the best you can do? Wow, it hardly even looks like her. If I knew her, I wouldn't notice that thing passing me on the street was her. <laughs> I was like, and then um, the, one, the one like Dolly the sheep is they take the egg, an egg out of a woman and they pull off the DNA and then imprint whatever DNA they want it and they can grow that uh, in, to near full term, put it in a woman, have her deliver it the rest of the term and deliver the child. And then once that's done, they can rapid age the child or they can keep it in, uh, not, they can actually put it in a test tube environment now where they don't have to have the woman. They do the woman so that the, the child has more identity, but if they don't want that, they want it to be more blank slated, they'll grow it to full term and they can even rapidly age it. So if you wanted to do Hillary, you could age it to the age of Hillary and within a two month period, you could have the child to the age of Hillary. And so those are the, the four main types, but there's another type which is due to a little kind of lizard-like creature they found d digging the dumbs that lives under the earth. It's about two feet tall, um, brown, green, kind of goldish, di different colors, um, called a real lizard. It has kind of, when it's adult, it has like a proboscis on his head, and they hold it over a person's face, and it puts the proboscis over their eye. And the cerebral spinal fluid of the creature flows into the person's eye and down their retinal nerve, and it kills the person, but the it takes the person over, kind of like the old movie Pod People was talking about that, where the creature becomes the person for over a two-week period. And initially it has access to most of the memories, thoughts, feelings, and of the person, but as time goes on, it loses the control of the memory, like what we see with Biden, where he stops realizing where he is first. Then he starts to forget who's who. So he's like, this is my daughter, excuse me, my wife, uh, my girlfriend. My, you know, and then he starts to, you know, if you don't like me, vote for the other Biden because it starts to forget who it is. And it starts to forget what it's doing. I'm voting, vote for me, I'm president or I'm running for president of Iran. <laughs> <laughs> but you know and those are the uh fourth kind of sort of clone it's still kind of sort of the person but it's been taken over and reintegrated by the real lizard wow it's amazing isn't it you think you think with all this technology they'd be able to find themselves a decent uh, contender wouldn't you that's yeah, like you said these people are stupid <laughs> yeah yeah and you're spelling dumb what about, B -B -U -M -S, yeah um they actually spell it it's actually ridiculing us that we're too dumb to figure it out yeah uh, d-u-m-b deep okay. underground military base i call them because not all of them are military so i call them subs okay secret underground bases yeah okay okay or subs if you want to go military yeah 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 mums so another request from Lee, the um, Br uh, Richard Branson, who is even a hundred times worse than <laughs> Epstein. And as we see in the Q post today, we have um, Biden's brother sold an, a little piece of land in the around Epstein Island to one of the people that worked for him. So I mean, it's all coming out, but uh, they want to know what's happening in uh, with uh, Richard Branson and how corrupt he is. That's according to Lee, okay? <laughs> you know, what people don't realize is that where the royals go, 
I mean, we're looking at Jeffrey Epstein. You're talking about people like Kevin Spacey and Johnny Depp and, you know, owners of these big companies like Google or whatever go to his island. But it's not where the royals go. The royals look at, at us as, as creatures, as scum. And so they're not, and the same, they look at, you know, Epstein's Island and the people that go there the same way. They, they will, are beneath them. They don't even touch the, their bottom of their feet. They're too filthy and disgusting and low. So when you're talking the queen and the, the big royal families, the Gothas and the Sachs and the Cobergs and all of this, those big families aren't going to go there. They go to the A-list island. Epstein's Island's the B-list. And so Branson's Island, uh, Necker Island is kind of just the first introduction. If you get invited, you go there first for, for, to be scoped out and to see what your preferences are and how you like to do things and who you are and how important you are and what part of the lineages you are of the 13 families. Are you Lee family or are you, you know, Goper, Gotha, whatever, you know, Romanoff, whatever, then you go to one of 17 other islands that uh, he has that go all the way from the Florida Keys down to Belize, Trinidad, and Tobago. There's 17 different islands through that that they traffic children, uh, used to be through the domes, the tunnels, the maglev systems, and all of that. They transfer the children so that when you go there, they have exactly, it's already been ordered up. They have, you know, groups that would go out and abduct children and abduct exactly what you want. I want this type of child at this age looking like this. This is exactly what I want to do. This is how I want it to look. And so you would have the perfect environment for that royal would go to that specific island. It would be like their own little hunting holiday where they would go out. Usually they like to hunt the child, so they would have their dogs and their horses and hunt the child down and then do the sacrifice, the satanic sacrifice, and have dinner with, you know, the child is dinner, of course, and they, you know, and, and do the uh, adrenochrome stuff that they do. And so Branson was the one that did the procuring and kept track of the who's who of the big families, a lot of, you know, like the, the House of Wetton and all these very, the Morhavingian line, the top line, the Pacers, the House of Wetton, the Romanoff, et cetera, the Cobras and the Gothos. Um, these top families, the who's who, what their proclivities are sexually and otherwise, how they how they want their their child cooked up for dinner, you know how it's supposed to be filleted and sautéed and all of those things, and exactly how it's all done. It's not just some random orgy like with the B list. It's very particular because you have to appeal to these pre people very precisely. They're in the upper chambers they're not the lower chambers like the Rothschilds or the lower chambers the upper chambers look at those people like scum so the, the those islands are the cream of the cream those are the 17 main islands but for example if you go to the Isle of Wight you go to the islands that used to be like the Shetlands and the um, Falklands going down from the Falklands the Shetlands and all of these other islands these royalty own those islands. So they have their own private islands as well, where Branson comes in with Virgin Island, Virgin, Virgin Airline. The reason it's called that, think of why they, these children have to be virgin. They have to be pure as pure as the undriven snow, as they say, so that they can get the most loose and the most fear and the most terror never, you know, grabbed so that they're not, uh, at all disturbed. They don't know anything. It's all a big, huge surprise. They're suddenly on this island being hunted by these royals. So, and they have these islands all over the world um, that um, they do this, you know, despicable stuff. But that's Branson's job is the procurement and the sanctity of these islands and exactly how to do each person when they want to do it and where they want to do it and how they want to do it. Wow. Now I've, uh, during this journey, I've had the opportunity to speak to a number of people. I've, sp I've spoken to two or three girls that have actually been to these islands, but have managed to escape. And their stories I've not been able to publish because they've asked me not to. Um, but for the educational side, I've heard firsthand about things that have gone on Epstein Island, on Necker Island, and on 
on other islands in the round there. So you're just confirming what I've already heard directly from somebody who's been there. Um, and as a father and as a grandfather, I find it deeply disturbing uh, that this has been going on and been protected by mainstream media. You know, many people have traveled on Virgin Atlantic thinking, oh, that's a nice name, Virgin. You know, they had no idea of the darkness that lies behind the name. But they were looking for virgins to take out to, to satisfy these corrupt, evil people. Um, and the world needs to wake up to what is really going on and to what has gone on. And the biggest problem is, is when you've got mainstream media, the television, the newspapers, they're all complicit. Mm. They're hiding this all up because the people who, I'm not saying that the editors of the newspapers are pedophiles or corrupt. What I'm saying is the owners are all linked to it. Um, so by, this is why they're protecting it. This is why they're not allowing it to come out because the owners, the owners of the, uh, the television stations and the newspapers are all linked to this circle of people. Yeah, it's, you know, I have trouble. That's why I, I started getting choked up when I talked about it. I have trouble talking about it because I, just, I have, like you, Charles, people, uh, women and some men that I know that I get emails and I sometimes do Zoom sessions trying to help them recover from these type of things that are done by these creatures. I don't even call them people because I don't think that's a person anymore. No. They don't have a soul. They don't have compassion. They don't have any consideration at all for evil at all. They're just pure evil through and through. There's nothing in there. There's no light of God in there anymore. That's nothing but a, cre a creature. That's a thing. And uh, to have that level of disrespect for a pure, you know, sweet little child, it, it's beyond comprehension. But like you said, these media, the things that are covering this up, as far as I'm concerned, they're the same. They have, and when this comes out, that the same thing should be done. They should be taken to trials and tribunals and found guilty of the same crimes that the royals that are there, they're covering up and hiding for and allowing this to go on knowingly. They're as guilty and their hands are as filthy as the people doing it. Yeah. It's just very, very sad the amount of people in power who've been involved and been complicit. That's, that's what's incredibly sad. And the sad thing is we, a lot of people, especially with the Hollywood set, are people that we've looked up to. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the, I, I can't even watch TV or movies or anything because I look at these people and knowing the things they've done, like Hanks and Spacey and... These people I used to love when before I knew what I knew now, and now I can all, all I can see when I look at that person is the things I've, I've known from people that I've talked to that they've done to children. And I can't, I can't, I don't find them funny anymore. I don't find them entertaining anymore. I don't find the movie entertaining anymore because all I can see is the horror of the child of the person that told me what they've got done to them on an island or in a dome and the Mark Ultra stuff that they do over years and years with some of the children that survive these hunting parties. They get in, taken into the Mark Ultra programs and get this endlessly for years. And, you know, these Hollywood thing creatures things too they're just as filthy as far as i'm concerned and you know that's why i don't as far as royalty um i'm done with royalty and i think the world should be done with royalty of having these creatures that rule over us with impunity i don't care the new king of england i don't care we're done with kings we have people we elect for a short term they are not in for life they don't have absolute power you give absolute power you have absolute corruption yeah. They, somebody who serves with impunity for life, no more above the law, separate from the law, whole different situation. They serve two four-year terms at the most, and they're done. That's it. They're, they're no more in there forever, all this stuff. That's how we got into this situation. And looking at people as above us, we're all equal. We're all created by the same God. We're all equal. There aren't those of us that are above and better than the others. And so that's got to stop because you're going to wind up with this all over again. And we get rid of this and we get that, keep that mindset. You're going to wind right back up where you are now. We got to realize that we respect all life and we, we're all equal. 
and not to look at somebody as like above you because they know more or they have some position because they're born into it. Nobody's born into anything. I don't care who you are. You're equal to me. You're not better. You're not worse. We're all equal. Yeah, we all have different roles to play. Though. We, we need leaders. We need leaders, but not dictators. Um, and a good leader, I often th use the example right now of a good shepherd. A good shepherd leads his sheep. The minute you try and push your sheep, they go every which way. But if you've got a good leader that has a good moral compass, then the journey is very, very easy. But it's made very, very difficult by corrupt leaders, dictators. Certain countries, certain countries need stronger leaders than others. And that was fairly clear with Iran, Iraq, Syria and Libya when you had um, Saddam Hussein, who was actually... Forget all the bullshit. He was a great leader. He kept these people under control. And they're, they're hard work to keep under control. Vladimir Putin. He runs a country that has 11 time, time zones. Full of, full of very, very strong people. You need to be super, super strong to look after 11 time zones of people that are, are strong people. Sometimes you need strong leaders. And there's been some very good strong leaders. Um, in our lifetime, and they've been slated by the mainstream media and by the corrupt governments because there's an element of jealousy, I think, more than anything else. But a good leader is a good thing. Uh, you know, we need leaders like Trump, and most people have no idea what, what type of leader he really is. He's very kind-hearted, but his IQ and his intelligence is so far above people that they can't understand it and they think he's talking in nonsense half the time because they can't understand the depths and the complexities of what he's actually saying. Yeah. And yet he's the type of person which, you know, in the military, you treat your people well, you reprimand in private, you congratulate in public, you don't see him unless you get way out of line. Um, then you want a pit bull. You want a leader that, you know, he's hurt, he's taking care of the flock, uh, he's He's watching over people, protecting people, and if the wolves come, you got a pit bull. I yeah. don't want a poodle in there. I want a pit bull that's not yeah. going to be playing games with a wolf. It's going to chew the wolf's neck off, yeah. you know, because you get some of these monsters coming in. I don't want somebody just going bark, bark, bark. I want somebody that's going to take the wolves out, and that's what we need because Trump and the uh, you know is dealing with – all the countries of the world. People don't realize that him and Putin and, and Xi and John Un and all of these are working together. Yeah, they, they play the deep state big time. Yeah, yeah, they do. And a lot of people have, have missed, and I was talking about it today on an earlier chat, they've missed the, the importance of what's happened in the Middle East, where the power shift has now moved to the United Arab Emirates. And that's not Dubai, that's Abu Dhabi. That's the godfather. Dubai is the prodigal son. Abu Dhabi is the godfather. And Trump has entrusted them the power because he's spoken to them. So you'll see a big power shift in the Middle East because he's empowered the United Arab Emirates. But not Dubai as a place, more to do with Abu Dhabi, which is the old school, old mentality, um, humble, very humble, um, very, very powerful and good people. Um, he obviously connected very well with them. And uh, this agreement was a complete, complete sidewinder for most people in the Middle East. And the first question is, well, what, what about Palestine? Look, this is a, these are pieces of the puzzle that will come together. Before you build a puzzle, you need to put the four corners in, which is what I was given in March, the four corners. And I'm building my picture. And it's becoming a beautiful picture right now. Yeah, that shift, people don't realize what that shift's really about. It's yeah. going back to the original true sect uh, that is the original Muslim, not what was written by Muhammad, yeah. but the actual original writings of the book of the Muslim, which yeah. is written by Ishmael. That yeah. is the Ishmaeli, which were pursued by and caught by the third Khan. And 90% uh, of them were sacrificed and torn apart in order to have them rewrite that, and they would not. And it was not until the Shiites were capitulated and we got Muhammad who rewrote and, and changed and, and uh, 
you know, bastardized what the original writings were. That was the, that United Arab Emirates is the holy family of the Ishmaeli, the original writings and the word of God, and was part of the original Bible that we mostly don't have. We only have 66 books of the, we're missing, that's why they have the 7-Eleven stores that are laughing at us again, because they removed 711 books. So we originally, and part of those are the, what Ishmaeli's writing is 777 books or a triple, a trinity of seven days, the seven days of creation. It's mm -hmm. everything is done sacred and those families still directly adhere to that in a, in a holy covenant. So that we're now getting back to the, the tr way that we, sh that, you know, the shepherds that take care of humanity for the covenant with God of the Ishmaeli, Ishmael, and Isaiah. And so we're getting back and we've shifted the power back to where it should be and in service to creator and into, into all life everywhere with respect and consideration, especially to the children. Yeah. So, you know, that shift is huge. Well, I have to say that I think, and I, what I know is that Dubai would be broke without Abu Dhabi and Abu Dhabi has funded Dubai for a very long time. It has, it certainly has, mm -hmm. but it's, as I said earlier, it's the godfather and the prodigal son. The mm -hmm. godfather will never let the prodigal son go. go right. you know, he's all, he'll always be there for him. It's very mm -hmm. interesting you're talking about the, the first book of the Quran, because I'm actually in the middle of uh, broker, brokering a deal for the first ever copy of the Quran, mm -hmm. which has a huge value. You know, we won't discuss the, the monetary value, but it's huge. But I'm actually in the middle of uh, between buyer and seller, mm. putting that deal together, which will be the, the sale of that, which is the first ever published version of the first first version of the Quran. It will, it will happen within the, before the end of this year. Is that the one written by Ishmael? You actually have that? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I know they had retrieved all the books when they went into that huge. Uh, got past all the gold <laughs> that was going from the Vatican. Then they got into the book, the libraries of books forever. <laughs> the information they took when they emptied the Vatican was unbelievable. Forget the amount of gold and the amount of cash. That's just physical. The amount of documentation and evidence they've taken out of there is, is the only word you can say is unbelievable. Yeah. They had some of the... Many of the original books of the Nephilim as well, the big 60-foot high books. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, we're living in a very interesting time. And uh, it's, it's fascinating. This, this has been a fascinating insight into the dumbs mm -hmm. or the mums <laughs> or, even, or even the bums. <laughs> The, you know the uh, the clones. Um, I've looked at a few people, and you don't need to be clever or a rocket scientist. When you look at somebody, and you just go, and the classic was Hillary Clinton and the way she was talking, and I was like, really? That's not her. You know, there was certain. It was almost like she was made in China. That one in a hurry. <laughs> Yeah, you, know, you look in the eyes. There's no soul there. There, you can see. There's the lights are on, but nobody's home. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Because there's been a few of them like that that have come out, um, and you just you question. I'm not going to name lots of names. I get myself in trouble. But that, that one was a, that one's an easy one for anybody to see. The Bi the Biden ones. Well, yeah, they they they're unique. The best ones I've seen are the Clin uh, are the Putin ones because I don't even know if I've met the real Putin yet because I've seen three or four of them. Wow. The Trumps are really good too. Yeah. One's got silver hair and one's got gold hair. <laughs> and one's got kind of gold orange hair. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> All these signs are out there, aren't they, Gene? All these signs are out there and yet the public are so brainwashed or indoctrinated by mainstream media, they're missing every single sign. Yeah, they believe and see what they're told to see. That's and right. they don't see what's right in front of them. I'll be looking at something, <laughs> looking at people going, you really 
I mean, what do you see? It's, I'm obviously not seeing what you're seeing because I'm seeing something really bizarre here. Do you? This is normal. <laughs> I know. You know, it's so true. It's so true. Um, they know, and I speak to many people that are still what I would call unaware of what's going on. They know something's wrong, but they won't open up their mind enough to allow the truth to come in. They're still, are you sure? You know, and they need to, they need to do investigation away from a television and just to turn the television off and just have a look, start researching. And if they need any help, we will always guide them as to where to look for information. Yeah. And, you know, the thing is, is with the clones is the, with how long they've been doing this and when they first finally hacked the human genome and you got the RH negative that allowed the human genome to be completely hacked now as they started removing factors. And people need to understand that when you see that RH negative come up, you know, this the hack, they got the A blood, the B blood, the RH negative, so they could completely hack and clone. That's how long ago when that blood showed up, that's how long ago they are doing clones. So if you look at Hitler's bodyguard and his butler, he's the guy that we found in the bumper bunker. He's a, a very close lookalike for Hitler, but yet people don't pay attention. There were tons and tons of people that saw him in the Mardi Gras every year at Rio de Janeiro in Argentina at his big compound in Argentina all the way up into the 80s, and people aren't paying attention at all. Mm. Amazing. Well, Jean and Kirsten, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. I have one thing to say for my China, <laughs> since I'm Chinese. President Xi, as confirmed by you, is working with Trump. He says in Chinese, we are removing the poison out of the bone. And that's when the head, the head uh, police chief in Shanghai has been arrested. Brilliant. Ni hao. <laughs> Thank you yeah. very much. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Notified for all my dad's new videos. My social media will be tagged down below so you can follow it. And just remember, Jesus loves you.